External flows are unbounded flows over any solid body immersed in a fluid. To call a flow external, we can either have a solid body moving in a stationary fluid or a fluid flowing over a stationary solid. The re-entry capsule entering the Earth's atmosphere is an example of the former and the wind blowing over high-rise buildings is an example of the latter. Furthermore, we encounter external flows when riding a bicycle on road or when traveling in a car, train, bus or a flight. In fact, most sports involving a ball traveling in air such as football, cricket, golf, tennis are all examples of external flow over the ball. Depending on the relative velocity between the solid body and fluid, we typically have two types of flow regimes, laminar and turbulent. Reynolds number, which is a non-dimensional quantity, is used to characterize this flow classification. In fluid dynamics, both laminar and turbulent boundary layer solutions provide some but not all the necessary information for characterizing external flow fields. Furthermore, in the case of internal flows, we are able to develop analytical solutions to understand the entire range of laminar flow regime. However, when we move to viscous external flows, we can only obtain analytical solutions to really low Reynolds number flows, such as Reynolds number on the order of 1. This flow regime is commonly called creeping flow and has very limited engineering applicability. Even for simple scenarios such as flow over a cylinder, the flow field at low Reynolds number is quite complicated. As Reynolds number increases from 1 to 10, we observe flow separation and the formation of a stationary wake. A wake is a relatively low pressure region formed behind the body because of flow separation. When the Reynolds number is further increased, this wake quickly becomes unsteady, leading to alternating periodic vortex structures originating from the upper and the lower parts of the cylinder. In fluid dynamics, this periodic origination of vortices at a certain frequency is commonly referred to as vortex shedding. Theodore von Karman studied and explained this stable configuration of alternating vortex pairs. This phenomenon persists over a wide range of Reynolds numbers and the flow is continuously varying in time. This makes external flow analysis quite challenging even for simple laminar flows. For other real geometries, analyzing external flow field can quickly become extremely challenging. The primary objective of the external flow is to estimate the overall flow resistance offered to the body moving through the flow field. The moving body must overcome both pressure and viscous forces exerted by the fluid. An aircraft designer relies on this knowledge to calculate the amount of fuel required when flying between New Delhi and New York. The engineers who designed the pressure suit for Felix Baumgartner, who jumped from a helium balloon from an altitude of approximately 39 kilometers from the Earth's surface in October 2012, had to worry about these resistive forces experienced by his suit. Lionel Messi has to consider overcoming this flow resistance while passing the ball to his teammate standing next to the goalpost. And his understanding of these forces are so deep 
that his passes are pinpoint accurate. A professional swimmer attempting to break Michael Phelps' record has to overcome this resistance offered by water. In nearly all external flows, the engineering goal is to identify and reduce these forces acting on the body moving through the fluid. In fact, the concept of streamlined bodies is a result of this optimization. In these streamlined bodies, the fluid flow remains attached over a significant portion of the body's surface, which ultimately leads to a reduced fluid resistance. We will learn about these forces in detail and the impact the shape of the solid body has on them. We will also discuss about the physics behind flow separation, the formation of wakes and their consequences.